All right, what's up guys, it's Minx. In today's video, we're gonna do sort of an intro to our new series, or I guess newish, whatever. It's a modding series for Lethal Company. We're gonna be rewriting Game Master from scratch. We're gonna pull some of the principles from there because some of them are correct. However, we're gonna be rewriting a lot of it in a much better way, a lot more organized, a lot less likely to run into bugs. So I created a list here of things that I wanna do with this. Uh, you know, a lot of it is I wanted to, spe I wanted to specify some of the features, some of the different things, and all that good stuff. So um, in today's video, we're just going to go over that real quick. We're going to create sort of a setup for a config controller. We're not going to just put all that in the main plugin folder cause that, or file because it's gross. We're going to have a object that handles it, and we'll kind of see how that goes. So firstly, uh, the list of things, we want to be able to spawn enemies. We want to be able to decide where to spawn them. So spawn an enemy nearby to a player, for example. Uh, still give all host settings such as god mode, speed hack, night vision. We're also probably going to do things like the server name. Unfortunately, you can't do like the custom server name because the uh, developer kind of patched that out a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, we can add it if we really want to. And we're going to use it for an example today. Um, by default, until settings are modified, this was a huge request. I want the game to act as if nothing happened. So you load up this rewrite of Game Master and the game doesn't change until you tell it to change. The whole point of Game Master was to give the player control and they didn't have the full control that um, I wanted. So we're going to fix that. Um, spawn all enemies on all maps. Certain enemies like Springhead or Coilhead or whatever um, or J J Jester, those are the two, weren't able to spawn in every map. And I did fix it with a wonky, like goofy, hacky way to temp like to fix it after you do certain actions in game. Uh, we're going to completely fix that from the get go this time. Uh, it's you're going to be able to spawn every enemy on every map. Uh, we want a fully functioning GUI. Uh, probably going to do chat commands. I don't know. We don't need them. We have the, we'll have the GUI. Um, and the GUI will work whether you're dead, well, the chat commands won't. So, you know, one's better than the other. Uh, customized server settings, like I said, AI settings, uh, fix bugs from previous versions. So, for example, God Mode would say it's on when it's not. Night Vision didn't always work. Night Vision, if you weren't a host, though, arguably, this should be host only. Um, but if you weren't a host, it would go in and uh, break. So, we want to be careful with that. Um, and then we want better GUI handling. So... Um, instead of hitting the insert key, like my my default was insert key makes sense, uh, but it doesn't for everyone. So instead, it's going to open as a result of a patched out com uh, method in the game instead of on a key press. That way, we don't have to keep track of, uh, you know, certain things. It can just be this menu pressed, check a couple things if need be, and set a variable. So pretty simple there. So let's go ahead and set up our config. We're not going to do all the variables. We're going to do one for just uh, example purposes today so we can kind of see how things go. So let's go ahead and do a new file. And actually, before we even do that, let's make sure that our instance here is static. Uh, we do an internal static instance um, reference. Um, the reason being is we need to access it from other things, and we're going to make a reference variable that is at an instance of an object that is accessed through this instance that we need to access on other objects, which we'll see. It's it's a little goofy, but it'll work. Uh, and it's not necessarily something that we're going to be using today, but we may use it in the future. And we want to cover that now so we don't run into an issue down the road that we can't figure out. So let's add a new item here and I'm going to call it configuration uh, controller and I'm going to give it a summary just uh, if you do this you go right above the class and do slash 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 Let's say this will hold and manage all uh, configs handle uh, used by config manager so we're not going to be using the config manager. However, it'll technically, quote unquote, be, uh, what do you call it, uh, compatible with the config manager. Because that's like, it's a built-in way to save and load data. So we don't need to, you know, we don't need to create our own system and, you know, use JSON or whatever. We can just use the config manager. So first thing I want to do is give this a constructor. Um, so we'll just give it a public configuration controller. And I want to give it a config in here so a config file we'll call it config so the config file is something that we have access to in plugins so if we're in here we say config.bind and config is a config file it's a config file 
because this derives from base unity plugin. If we come over here, uh, here, and we get rid of this, we just comment this out for a second. If we type in config, we don't have access to it. We don't have access to config. It's trying to use config file. Um, yeah, we're not going to be using that. So we're going to get rid of that. We're just going to use config file config. So how are we going to use this? So we're going to use, for example, we're going to have a private. We're going to make this private. It's a very specific config entry. And we're going to do a string here, for example. And we'll just call it, for example, server name CFG. And it's private because we don't do anything with it here. We uh, this doesn't. We don't go into start of round patch and say, "Hey, change server name," or we'd go into the GUI and say, "Change server name." No. What we do is we give it an internal. We'll do an internal string, and I'm just going to call it server name, just server name. And we're going to give it a get. So get. And then inside of the get, we're going to say if server name cfg dot value we're going to say if it's equal to null it should never be equal to null or well, equal to empty not equal to null we're going to say if it's empty um, then we're going to say return and we're just going to cast it to a string string uh, server name cfg dot, uh, dot default value or we could pass in a custom default value um, but the reason we cast to a string here is if default value or default value is an object and technically it's a string object in this case, so this will this will work. We could also say dot to string. That should also be fine considering this is a quote unquote string uh, already, but it doesn't know that, so that's fine. And then if it's not equal to an empty thing, we'll say return server name name dot value. Or server name CFG, excuse me. CFG dot value. So then if it's not an empty string, it will return the normal value. And then we can also define a setter here. And set can just be a point to server name cfg.value equals value. It's already got that pre-fill in for us. So now we can do this. We access server name and it will automatically modify the config value. This way we don't have to be trying to do this logic every time we try and get a reference to it um, or something else. We'll have to define all of that here. Um, we could probably also make like a helper method for this. For example, where we make a getter, a generic getter that passes in a config entry and it checks the default value. We could probably do something like that. We're not going to, uh, if I do it, it'll be something to figure out later. For now, this works. Um, considering the amount of config entries we have, this is going to be a pretty big config file. So we have to be careful. Um, you know, this is going to be our friend making it one line. But anyway, now we've done that, it doesn't just automatically work. We have to uh, define it. So if we say server name, or initialize, I guess, CFG equals config.bind, and this will bind to the main plugin config, which is why we passed it through. We'll say server settings, and I'm just gonna toss these in here. Actually, let me do quote and quote and quote. I think it's four. So if we hover over these, it takes a section, a key, a default, and a description. So the section is the uh, like grouping that it's in. So for example, uh, this, I don't know, uh, this method is a section, and then this is an item in that uh, section, I guess you could say. Um, so the key is going to be the name of it. So I could say server name, default value, could just default server name, and then description, the name, used when creating a server overwrites the input overwrites the menu input um, in game i'll say the in game menu input there we go and to make this a little more readable for example a lot of these are going to have you know slightly longer things like that you can hit enter before this quote and I'll put in the second line um, so now if we were to start the game nothing would actually happen because we haven't Put it in, uh, but this would bind when we set it up to the actual uh, value, and we could then use the uh, server name um, because the get for server name passes into the uh, get there. So, what we can do now is just as an example, uh, I guess everything here is kind of an example for today, um, is make an internal configuration controller. And I'm just going to call it, I know this is kind of ironic, config manager. 
Um, that's what I'm going to call it in this case. I, you know, the names are going to have a little bit of overlap. Um, it is what it is, you know, with the actual config manager. This is just our kind of internal one that we're going to use. So with this, we're just going to say config manager equals new configuration controller. And we'll just toss in our config. And then, for example, if we were to access something from here, we could just say config manager dot server name equals test config. We could say something like that. Um, keep in mind, since it's an instance of an object, we could do it. And void awake is a uh, um, non static here, it's not really static. So, if we were to make like a static method or something, we would have to reference the instance. We would have to say, instance dot this and it works here because that is the full uh, uh from this pers from this point of view this is the full uh, fully qualified name um, but let's take this a step further real quick here so we've got this let's go to start of round for example so if we were to start a game that'd be kind of late i guess i don't know what would end up happening if we were well it wouldn't matter because it's just a variable um we could say what is the name of the plugin here we go, tutorial mod base in my case. To fully qualify it, we say tutorial mod base dot instance. So we get the static reference to the instance dot config manager. And then now we have a full access to the config manager object. And we could say dot, and in this case now we have equals server name or dot server name equals uh, my new new server. There we go. And this would work. Uh, we have to, you know, we'd have to patch start of rounds. So we'd have to, you know, uncomment the start of round patch here. But this would do that. So that's how we're going to handle the configs. We're going to put them over here in their own file and never touch them. Uh, well, we'll touch them, but not that way. Uh, we're going to leave them over here and not do anything with them once they're in here. We're just going to programmatically access them outside of it. So. I don't want to be messing with multiple variables for one thing. I don't need two God mode variables or two night vision variables. I need one that's going to do everything and it's going to be here. Technically we have two for everything, but one that's accessible outside of this class. And as far as everything else is concerned, there's only one. That's, that's what I mean. So well, with that said, that's it for today's video. This is sort of just an intro. Um, in the next video, we'll get to write in some more interesting stuff, I think. So uh, with that said, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.